there are no simple heroes and villains for me. I'm interested in why you can act very well on one day and very badly the next. This enormous conflict that people have, how do you try to live an honorable life? When the attractions of success or of material gain are very strong, how do you give some meaning to your life when all around you is chaos and possible extinction? Larry Kasdan knows Han Solo better than anybody. He's a force in the industry as a writer, as a, as a director, as a producer. And he has this tremendous history with the galaxy. Kathy approached me to come back to the franchise. I had been gone for a long time. And they said, is there any of the characters you'd like to deal with? And I said, well, there's only one, and it's Han Solo. And John got involved after that. Well, this is our first experience writing together. Uh, we've both worked separately, and, and he asked me to help him with this project, and it was an irresistible opportunity. I missed the theatrical releases of all three of the original movies. I was three or four when Jedi came out. So I didn't have a going to the theater experience of Star Wars. What I did have was sort of the early days of VHS and becoming five or six or seven and discovering these movies, knowing that we had this family connection to them. And one of the great, great privileges of being a cast and kid was that at Christmas, a box would come from Lucasfilm and it would be filled with Star Wars toys. And it was better than any Christmas present we were getting from our parents by far. It was the Christmas present to open, which was a huge part of my childhood. And so these fantasies of future Star Wars movies have been with me my whole life. And the fact that they're a reality is sort of unbelievable. Ready and action. I had wanted to work with John. He had been writing and directing on his own for a while. We had talked about things and we shared a lot of interests in the kind of movies we liked. When the possibility of working together on Han came up, that seemed exactly right. And we didn't know how it would go. Yeah. It's probably the hardest person to work with is your son. Yes, or your father. Yeah, or your father. But the whole saga is about fathers and sons and generations yeah. and daughters. And so it fits right in, kind of thematically, working together. I began to see that there was a really invaluable intersection of generational love of the Star Wars movies and this particular character. And sometimes there's a little tension that comes out of that, creative tension. There have been moments when he and I were writing and sort of arguing, and as his son, I was eager to get done with the day and get back to my life. They were the kind of difficulties that, not so different from any collaboration. I looked a little added emotional texture because he was my son. But they passed, and then we had, uh, you know, three years, really, of great fun. I think John feels a lot of the pressure and drive to define yourself and really made the story connect as a young, kind of rebellious guy struggling to define himself. Now, certainly Larry would understand that too and be interested in that, but I think a lot of that comes from John. We both brought very different sensibilities to it and sort of fused them together in a room together for a long time, for, for about five months, and uh, we just sort of hashed it out, you know? Oh, John knows much more than me. I've written four of these movies, but he knows more <laughs> detail. I'm definitely the bigger Star Wars nerd, I would say. A sort of a wider frame of knowledge for the canon and the extended universe and all of that kind of thing. He's very funny about it. He thinks it's sort of charming and uh, pitiful that uh, I don't know some basic facts. There's a whole group of movies I know almost nothing about, and he's seen those. He's a purist, and more of a purist than me, because he feels a real sense of ownership over those first movies. There's a sense of working with sort of a grand scholar of Star Wars, someone who is an authority. I'm sort of an original 
you know, I'm faithful to the originals. I met Han Solo in A New Hope, which is everybody's first experience in this world. And he was immediately my favorite character. I liked everybody else. I was interested in everybody else. I worshiped Alec Guinness. I liked that character a lot. But it was Han who always riveted me. He was right in line with all the kind of characters that I've always liked in movies. Bogart and Queen and every guy who pretends like he doesn't care about other people, but really does. Won't stick his neck out for anyone and always does. I recognized him immediately when he appeared at the cantina. Greatest introduction maybe ever for anybody. And at that time, I was writing Raiders of the Lost Ark. When I was finished with it, I took it to George Lucas and he threw it on the desk and he said, come on, let's go to lunch. And I began work on Empire the next few days. I was thrilled to do that. It was an amazing job to get. George came to visit us on set and I noticed a profound similarity between the way he talked about Star Wars and the way that my dad talked about Star Wars. They both have a kind of straight, no-nonsense approach to this whole thing that is refreshing and useful, particularly when it's bounced back and forth with someone like me who thinks about all of it. I think there's something about the spirit, the swagger of the characters that Larry and John write that really informed this movie in an important way. There's a real humanity in what Larry does. I think that's what comes through. He's a deeply, deeply good person, and I think he sees that in his characters. I'm an outlaw. <laughs> you can tell yourself that. How much is a character aware of his own failings and limits? How much is he sort of foolish in the sort of endearing way that a lot of people are that I admire in the movies, you know? 